What's going on everybody? This is Afro Think Tank. And today I want to talk about something that never gets talked about. It never ever gets talked about. And if it is talked about, it's glossed over. So I want to talk about that today. And the reason why I want to talk about it is because I just did a video, I just did a video, put something together, where a couple days ago, delegations from various West African countries came to America and apologized for their role in the transatlantic slave trade. The same thing African-Americans, the Afro-Caribbean diaspora, the Latino diaspora have been asking for for years, right? We want everybody to apologize, that's number one. And after that, we want you to, you know, tangibles. What are you gonna do to make up for it? You know, because that's what comes after apology, you have to reconcile completely. And that's the goal. And that was, a, that's the goal and an intention of this delegation. That should have been the biggest news in black America. But what were we paying attention to? What were we paying attention to when the biggest news that we should have been talking about? Everybody should have been making videos. But nobody was making videos about this. Nobody was doing live streams and talking about this. Nobody of no black person of any prominent note was talking about this. Nobody. We all should have been known. It should have been common knowledge that this happened. We all should have seen it. But that's not what happened. The media didn't cover it. Of course they wouldn't. So because of that, the news is late. But I said something in that chat. I said something uh, in that, that video where I was talking about there was families. You know, for every person that was brought over here, that's a family ripped apart. For every person that had the experience getting raided, right? That's a family ripped apart, right? And so when we say they imported, I mean, they stole or 10 million or however millions, tens of millions of African people were stolen, hundreds of millions of African people were stolen, whatever the number is, that's also hundreds of millions of families. Hundreds of millions of mothers, hundred, hundreds of millions of fathers, hundreds of millions of wives, hundreds of millions of sons, hundreds of millions of daughters in Africa, stripped of their family members, stripped of their loved ones, on mass for 400 years. By foreigners who are coming from an unknown place with technology that you can't counter the gun that exacerbated the already complex issues within your communities as it was. The same way you drop crack into a community, right? And all of a sudden, all the drug dealers are killing each other. Because when it was just weed, they weren't killing each other. It wasn't that serious. But when that crack came in, all of a sudden, it became serious. Look at the results, right? So, you gotta figure as African Americans, like I keep saying, we it, we talking about, uh, this shit just happened. We talking about our grandmamas, 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 grandmama. Grandmama, maybe. A lot of us came over here in the 1800s as slaves, right? That's only a hundred something years ago. A lot of us only came over here only 200 years ago. Most of us came over here between 200 to 300 years ago. Because 400 years ago, 500 years ago, it was the Portuguese going to Brazil from the Congo. The Congo been dealing with this shit longer than everybody. And they still dealing with it right now. Worse than everybody. Because they are the they're probably the most most resource rich country or area in Africa. The most valuable substance in the world are there. That's why it's destabilized. That's why the blue hats are there. The UN and all the European got their greedy fingers in there. That's why so much bad things happen there. And that's why you don't know about it. Because they don't even talk about it. That's on cold. That's your that's pan-European cold. Don't talk about the Congo. 
They don't want us talking about the Congo. But no one ever thinks about the the the, the stories that these Africans have of having a loved one stripped from them in mass. 400 years of having your children stolen from you in mass on a village on a in, on a village scale on a small town scale on any type of scale imagine that so while we was over here while our ancestors was over here suffering our family we was here suffering our family was over there suffering on the motherland and what you guys don't know because y'all listen to stupid people on the internet you don't know you think Africans hate you because you got a few dumb Africans that hurt your feelings they say something stupid about your people so what you act like you ain't ever said something stupid about some other body, other people, right? We all do it. But you, know, you can't blanket everybody for it. Do you know that they know who we are? Because like I said, we it we didn't just come out. They didn't pluck us out of the ground. We came from a family. So they have stories of their families being stripped, whole villages being taken. This was a traumatic event for them too, you know. They had to deal with that for 400 years too, you know. By the same people that owe us an apology, they owe them an apology. The same rich people that owe us an apology also owes them an apology. Because these are business people and politicians of the day. And it was about profit. People got greedy. All skin folk ain't kin folk. We already know that. So if all skin folk ain't kin folk now, we know that and accept that and live with it and we work around it. What makes you think it wasn't like that back then? All skin folk ain't kin folk. Everybody don't get rich, you know, the right way. Some people step on people's necks to get rich. We know that. That's reality. And that's what happened. All right. Some people paid the ultimate price for it. Some people got away with it. Some people still getting away with it right now. Because slavery is not over. If you go to Dubai, you participate in slavery because as they enslave South Asians and Africans over there. Everybody there is, for the most part, they take their passports and they enslave. They're enslaved. Sex trafficking and slavery. Europe, sex trafficking. There's more slaves right now in Europe and Asia and all over the place in America than there ever was during this transatlantic slave trade. But we pretend like it's not happening. All right, it's a whole different type of slavery, but it's happening. What do you think these kids being taken when they when they disappear, huh? What do you, what do you think's happening? There's a market. And you know what's a real valuable market? An American child. A white American child and a black American child. Either way, American, that's valuable over there in Europe and Asia. In those markets. So slavery is still happening. So that's why I, when I see people going to Dubai thinking that's the place, like you are participating in slavery the same way that other people and Europeans participated in slavery back then. But you put put a blind eye to it the same way poor white folks put a blind eye to it back then because they, they, they couldn't participate in it because it was pro. This was a rich man's game. Right. I'm just keeping it real. But we never think about the families that we still have that's still over there right now. And there's people doing their DNA and actually finding living relatives over there right now. I'm one of them. I have a living relative over there in Ghana right now. A living relative that I found. So if I ever decide to go contact that person, I can find my family, my root, all the way. There's people doing that right now. Right now. So if you want to know, you can know. It's just up to you. You have to accept the truth. And you have to have some empathy for other people. The same way you want people to empathize with your plight. You want people to empathize with your struggle. You want people to empathize about what it is your ancestors have been through. And why you need reparations. Why you need um, reciprocity. Why you need to be. Why your voice needs to be heard. If you want people to have empathy for you. And the, and the plight of your people. You also got to return that with the empathy of other people. It's a two way street. As a society, you have to empathize with others and see their point and see where they're coming from and feel for them too as well, especially your black folk. 
Their struggles may not be exactly the same as yours, but there's a struggle there that needs to be acknowledged. And we need to stop trying to measure who's, whose struggle was, was worse. It's objective. Everybody was getting noosed up. Everybody was getting burnt. Everybody was getting raped. Everybody was getting shot. Everybody was being forced to work. Just one took a trip on a boat and one stayed. We got to put all this in perspective and stop being children and stop fighting over stuff we don't know nothing about. Just because you hear somebody say, oh, they sold us into slavery. It ain't that simple. Why you give the pass to the European who did it, who, who implemented it and put things in context. The slavery, the transatlantic cattle slavery was totally different. We didn't know we were selling our, our people into that type of slavery. We thought we was doing the same thing we've been doing for thousands of years. That was part of the economy. There was a method to that. We didn't take away humanity from our people. We didn't know they were going to do that. We didn't know them like that. You got to put everything into context and stop making everything black and white because it's not. It's a lot of things, a lot of things that happened, a lot of things that failed, a lot of circumstances that led to us being in this situation. And, de- and so right now, we do need to remember what the ha- we have to put our own picture about what happened in the bay. We got to put the whole entire ob- objective picture in front of us, right? So if we're doing that, we need to be talking about our stories. Our stories need to be told. Like the movie uh, Woman King. Of course, it's a movie. Not based on an actual true story. But it, it provokes the conversation. That's just like any movie. I mean, it's consistent. The Woman King is consistent with how all movies based on true events happen. You have the event, which is a true place, a true time, true people. Then you just create your own fantasy within the lexicon or the surroundings or the environment or the world within that truth or reality of that time in, in that geography. That's it. You got to think of just a little bit more. You got to swim in the deep water, not in the shallow end. This is how all movies based on real real life happen. That's how you do it. And then after that, it makes you ask the question, well, let me go find out what the real story is. That's what you do. You don't complain about the movie because guess what? Nobody would be talking about these people if we didn't make movies putting it in front of people that's how it works so stop be that's how you've been learning about what european uh fantasies european culture european lore irish people thor all that that's how you learn about that they put a cartoon character in front of you they put a, a marvel character of thor then you go find out about the real history of thor the real god of thor the real odin and they all see nobody complaining about oh that's not the real freaking thor on on marvel so why y'all tripping about <laughs> the king, the woman king and this and that and is that perfect we get mad at the wrong things we don't want to not have our priorities in order we do not think rationally as a group of people because we're so damn emotional it's a it's a blessing and a curse we're emotional because we're emotional spiritual beings which is very in tune with everything but we need to learn how to control all of that because people take advantage of that and we get ourselves distracted within our own selves one of our greatest gifts, but one of our our, our, our our biggest vices. It's like our own personal kryptonite. Right? But we have to control it. Think rationally and think about our situation. Think about, hey man, we need to work together. Doesn't matter what country you live in. You black. You know the situation. Move forward. Let's let's innovate. Let's do something more. Let's move forward. Let bygones be bygones. Let's shake hands. Let's hug it out. Let's learn about each other. Let's learn about each other's culture for real. Let's take every time a misstep or a misnomer about our culture come up. Let that be a teaching moment instead of an arguing moment. Make that a moment of uh, correction with respect. And I guarantee you that will be appreciated. It will come back reciprocated because then they were like, man, I said something that could have possibly been offensive. But then instead of them getting mad at me. They actually just taught me the real thing. I really appreciate that. You know, uh, you know, I really like that person. That person is cool. 
You get way further being nice than you do being an asshole. As soon as you know you're an asshole, the other one shuts down. You're not even talking anymore. All you're doing is wasting air and just getting yourself huffy and puffy. That's it. No, every, All building stops once the arguments start happening. Because now our egos are involved. Right? Now, who, 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 big dog gonna bow down, huh? No, nothing neither, because we black people, and you know, we got egos. Which big dog gonna back down? Nobody. We're gonna be doing this over and over competitively until what? Until we're, until we're really taken over by other people because we're distracted about fight and fighting when we got people trying to take our stuff and continue to monetize us and not cut us in on the deal. So we really got to get it together, guys. All right. This is Pan Africanism. This is Pan Africanism. And as a Pan African, we need to understand the plight of the other people and just be a little bit more humble and just and just learn just what happened. It happened. It already happened. It's not hurting us now. It happened. And it didn't happen to us, but it did happen. It's history. Okay? So we don't have to be, we can be emotional, but we ain't got to be all like that. Okay? You know, and this goes for the other side too. Same thing go, go with you guys. All right, we don't know about you, you don't know about us, but now we get to know each other. We bumping heads, but we're getting to know each other. And it's getting better, as you can see. Despite our lack of concentration in the matter. But if we concentrate a little bit more, we can get a lot more done a lot quicker. And nobody can stop us. We are right there. We just got to decide to take it. We are right there. We just have to decide to take it. They can't do nothing to us anymore. That's what, we, that's what we're trying to tell you. They can't do nothing to us anymore. We have the power. It's right there in front of us. Just decide to grab it. Save all that smoke for everybody else who mean to do us harm. That's it. That's all I got to say for now, guys. Afro Think Tank. Learn something. Teach something. I'm out.